Hey Gadget Groupies, I got a quick comparison here, not necessarily one of my showdown fight for bloods, punch, 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 punch. Uh, what we're taking a look at is the question of whether or not you should upgrade if you're currently rocking a Lumia 930. This is my Lumia Icon, technically it's the 929, but this is the United States version of the Lumia 930, opposite the Lumia 950. Now, of course, the clickbaity title, should you upgrade, question mark, bestest phone conversation, battle, fight for blood, is, is really just to lead into sort of an automatic reply in that if you're still a fan of Windows Phone, you're still on board the platform, you wanna see where the platform is going to grow, it's sort of an answer of yes by default. Uh, I can't really think of any other companies that have kept us in holding patterns for as long as Microsoft did after they bought out Nokia, the, the Nokia hardware uh, development team. Moving from the Lumia 930 to the Lumia 950 represents over 20 months of waiting out for a new flagship phone, new flagship hardware. And that really did throw a cold bucket of water on the Windows phone uh, momentum. You know, there was a little while there be between the Lumia 1520 and the 930 where we were seeing a little progress. We were seeing a little more adoption. I saw a bunch of 1520s out here around Southern California just because it was such an audacious phone. And immediately, one of the first things that you'll notice is the fact that we're moving to a higher resolution screen. The uh, Lumia 950 is rocking a quad HD display, 2560 by 1440, over the Lumia 930's 1080p display. And both of these devices are featuring clear black screens. And clear black is their fancy brand name for an OLED display, where each individual pixel makes its own light. And uh, you, you get those insane contrast ratios, super inky blacks, because those pixels are off and very vibrant colors. Though I do find it interesting that when you crank both screens up to 100% brightness or high brightness, that the 930 actually does seem to have the brighter display. Although both of these phones have great outdoor brightness modes where when they detect sunlight, they'll crank to a super bright and they'll change the contrast of the screen to help for readability. Moving to the rear, they both have terrific pure view Zeiss lens, 20 megapixel cameras. Um, I do like this metal design accent on the back of the Lumia 950. It's one of the few design types that I think has actually matured over the Lumia 930. When it comes to the sensor lens combination, these two perform very similarly. Great clarity, great pixel level detail, they'll both capture raw images. But I find that the image processing on the Lumia 950 is more aggressive than what Nokia used to do with their older Lumia camera app. However, when you do fire up the triple LED flash on the 950 over the dual LED flash on the 930, I think you get better color accuracy indoors, especially in warm or mixed lighting situations. And I, of course, have the most in-depth camera review on what the uh, Lumia 950 is capable of. And you can compare where we were with uh, 4K video once it was released for Lumia Denim on the 930 against where we are now with the Lumia 950. These are phenomenal cameras. They are top tier cameras and one of the best sensor lens combinations I think I've ever seen when it comes to things like uh, pixel level detail, clarity, contrast. It's great glass that they throw on the backs of these phones. In terms of overall build and design though, it's no contest. The 930 is a prettier, nicer feeling phone. The 950 feels almost exactly like uh, Lumia 640. This is a very plain polycarb shell. It feels kind of cheap considering this is a $600 phone. We don't have any of those little touches or flourishes that Nokia used to imbue all of their devices with very modern accents. None of that's here. All of the little design elements here are super subtle, but the metal banding surrounding the sides of the phone feels very nice. The difference in tactile feel between metal on the sides and the polycarb back has been one of my all-time favorite design accents on any smartphone. The way that the phone tapers on both the front and the back just feels nicer. Even how the glass is subtly shaped into the corners of the phone, there are just these wonderful little touches, these wonderful little design elements that really do speak to this being or having been a premium product. Of course, you can dress up the 950, you can buy a replacement backplate with leather, or with metal and plastic accents, but it's just kind of a bummer that we don't have that out of the box wow factor that we used to with Nokia devices. Of course, having a removable backplate means that you can do things like get to the battery 
and uh, add things like your uh, like a memory card, which is something that the 930 does not have. I was I always thought that was kind of a bummer that a phone that took such great photos and videos didn't have the ability to expand storage. And thankfully, that has been rectified on the 950. And as these things age, the battery is built into the 930, which uh, which means it's going to be a little harder to refresh that battery. Whereas on the 950, you can pop this out, put in a new one, or keep a spare around, and uh, it's going to be like you have brand new brand new phone battery life right out of the box again. And playing around with benchmarking and testing the phone, I haven't heard significant upgrades in speaker quality between the 930 and the 950, and unfortunately, headphone playback on uh, on the 930 and the 950 feels like it's gotten it's been kind of stagnant too which is dangerous in a market where LG and Samsung have been working to radically improve their audio playback HTC is still the champion of high quality audio especially over headphones and uh, Microsoft feels like they're kind of in a holding pattern there that we might not rely on our devices for multimedia capabilities as much. I think that's still a trend that people want to pay attention to. High quality music and audio playback through speakers and headphones. And that's one area where I don't feel like we've evolved much. One area where Microsoft is of course bleeding edge now is in using a USB type C connector. Uh, they're one of the first on the market to walk away from micro USB. And this does bring those really cool features like uh, continuum where you can plug the 950 into a dock and then have it show up like a full-fledged Windows PC on a larger screen like a TV or a desktop monitor. We have a full review of the uh, Continuum dock that you can check out. And uh, it's a pretty cool, I mean, there's a lot of potential. It's a pretty cool option. It's a pretty cool feature for a phone. We just need to see developers get on board actually producing more software that we can take advantage of. And of course, another high-tech feature is this little red orb that glows here in the upper corner of the screen, which is scanning from my face right now. It's not gonna find it. But that's the iris scanner for Windows Hello. So instead of putting a fingerprint scanner on there, we do have the ability to scan your face and look for uh, the iris of your eye to unlock the phone, which is really cool. I mean, it's a little less cool. I, I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, well, you can totally use it with glasses and with sunglasses. And I've had very terrible experiences with my Ray-Bans and with my Ken Cole sunglasses in using Windows Hello. Like, it's almost never worked that I can remember with sunglasses on. So in Southern California, where we are apt to wear sunglasses a lot, you're constantly, maybe you'll be in a situation where that'll work better for you, but otherwise you'll have to take your sunglasses off a bit. But if you're in a colder climate where you might be wearing gloves, face scanning and iris recognition technology is stinking cool. Uh, if you, you, you want to replace something like a fingerprint scanner where you might have cold fingers or you might have to take your gloves off to unlock your phone. And of course, making this move over to yours, we would expect a number of changes in terms of software and performance. We've moved from Windows Phone 8 Lumia Denim firmware to Windows 10 and Windows 10 for mobile. Now, I feel like Microsoft has seeded some of their performance efficiency. Windows 8 developed a, a reputation for running super quick and super sleek on less powerful hardware. And I don't feel this is necessarily true. The Lumia 950 is rocking the same Qualcomm 808 that we might find in a G4 or in a V10. And even though we're still in pretty early software, it kind of needs a few more bug fixes. I can't say that performance here feels snappier than what we might see on similarly spec Android phones, especially when we also talk about battery life. That battery life, even though this is a much larger battery, a 3000 milliamp hour battery to the 2400 milliamp hour battery, in the Lumia 930, that the processor and software are working together to be as efficient as previous Windows phones have been. And while I like the little flourishes, the new layout for your app drawer, for example, and how things are organized, and for me, that kind of becomes the, the comparison talking points. We lost a lot of style, we lost a lot of cool, but we got some fun new tech and some forward and some future facing tech, things like USB type C and the iris scanner. And unfortunately that meant a number of other things kind of just held in place, like the camera resolution and the speaker quality and the headphone jack quality weren't really addressed over two years. Getting back to where I was at the beginning of this video, if you're a fan of Windows Phone, if you're if you're really wanting to check in on where Windows 10 is going to be going over the next year, the 950 I think is probably the best buy for Windows Phone fans at the moment. But I gotta say folks, I really do miss some of the attention that Nokia used to pay on their devices that Microsoft seems to have chilled or distilled out of 
their Lumia brand. And of course, I want to hear from you folks because I know I've got some Windows Phone fans out there in the ecosystem. Have you stayed with the platform? Are you still rocking 1520s or 640s? What devices might you be using to test out new live tile features, Cortana, stuff like that? Definitely drop me some comments down below this video, especially if the Lumia 950 was tempting your eye. Is this the fit? Is this the right device to keep you interested in the Microsoft platform of mobility products? Those are the kinds of conversations I love getting into. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more rambling comparisons like these. And I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it, either by shopping using the affiliate links below every single one of my videos or by buying my book. Uh, take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs is now on Amazon, and it should help you take your smartphone photo game up a notch, especially when we start talking about amazing content creation devices like Lumia's and LG's and Samsung's Oh My. And of course, sharing my videos on your favorite social sites is always greatly appreciated, be it Reddit or Google Plus or Twitter or the Facebook. I can't thank you enough for bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next comparison.